What's up, folks? The girls just left. Our niece is going home. She's got school on Tuesday. And Chris is doing some shopping. I've got video production already ahead of the schedule. I think I'm good until Tuesday night, but i got to come up. i got like six more things I want to record for next week. So I may work on that this afternoon. Or I may do that tomorrow. I don't know yet. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day, though, because Chris and I have to go out in the morning. we got to go get plumbing supplies because we're, we finally have reached the point of no return with our kitchen, with our uh, bathroom sink. The on-off spigot has just been deteriorating. I don't know how old it is. It's got to be at least 20 years old, probably. And uh, the gaskets have just been failing and failing, so we're going to go replace that tomorrow. And we got to go to the, the pharmacy because I need vitamins and some stuff. So... Tomorrow I might not get a lot done in the morning. Afternoon be hit and miss. In any case, I got a lot of fun stuff to work on this week. And hopefully, we're almost done with the main campaign here. And then we're going get to get into the White Marsh, which I've actually never done before. So that's going to be very interesting. What quest are we on? We're on a quest called the Assassin at Large. Theos has killed the Duke and Lady Webb and sent to find Spain to chaos. But Lady Webb saw her intent to go to the City of Twin Elms. Oh, I may not have quick saved this the last time I played played. I needed to speak to the sisters. Tear Ebron. Yeah, I did this last time, I just forgot to save it. You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. It is not... Yeah, I don't... Uh, I'm not going to go through this again, because I, I went through it last time. I think for some reason uh, it didn't save or something when I picked that up, so... We're kind of skipping through all this, because I vaguely remember this from last time we played. It's at the end of last session. Welcome to the channel, Zemac. Turn do, around, do. flesh creature. Do you not feel it? So hmm. What of it, young trespasser? I seek a man. Is it as my sister says? Or are you there? Really, sister? The answer is yes, old one. We crossed paths with Theos not long ago, so that is the reason he... I told you we should have... It would have been the last thing... Yes, okay. but... But that's not what this... I see it now. I'm sorry to tell you this, but... An awakening cannot be undone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Did you truly expect to be able to wipe it away? Hmm. This I don't remember what I chose last time, so. The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Do you truly expect it to be able to. Put things right. However, okay. as much as my sister speaks truly that there is no way back from an awakening. There may yet be a way forward. I would. Were the way not so likely to end in death. Death may be preferable to what lies it in may, store for me. But not all deaths are alike. And the man you pursue is versed in thousands of them. This is true. The man Theos, you must already know by now. You are linked by a common past. Something about it lingers within you, festering, unresolved. What it is, I cannot see any more than you. And without that knowledge, your doom is certain. Certain, is it? But were you to learn the source of this discord, perhaps it could be put to rest. Though it is equally possible it would trouble you as much now as it did then, and merely speed your condition to its end. My past comes to me in pieces. How do I unlock the you rest? You might wait for it to come on its own, of course. But when it comes... It will replace your sanity's last breath. Such is the nature of your condition. Or you could learn it from someone who already knows. Theos, for sure. It is said the gods made his memory perfect. That he may never forget his charge. If he ever knew, he still does. Interesting. Not that he would tell you, of course. You have followed the right person for the wrong reason, it seems. We see it often beneath the elms. The soul driving mind and body to unknown places for unfathomable reasons. 
You may have wandered into Theos' path many times, in many lifetimes, without an awakening to show you why. The only thing that's certain is you did not find what you sought. But you said you know where he went. He has gone down beneath the town to a place older than we, where the people of Engwith once walked. He makes his way to the buried city, Sun and Shadow. May he stay down there and rot with the remains of his people. He may yet. He won't be returning the way he came, that much is certain. He opened a secret path in the tower's base and saw it destroyed behind him through some vile means. Is there another way? We know of one. On the burial aisle, through the court of the penitents, Brayeth Yaman. A shortcut, in fact. Don't be cruel, sister. The way my sister speaks of is not for the faint of heart. A great pit at the center of a forgotten court where faiths were judged in place of crimes. To most, it is simply a gateway to death. With the help of the gods, it can take you where you want to go. And, uh, so what do you mean by the help of the gods? The pit is said to have been a means of judgment by the gods. Those cast into it are meant to die. It is that way you must pass to reach them in shadow. An impossible task, but of course. The court is old. We do not know much for certain. But it would seem only the gods themselves can grant passage. So what is the court? No more than a ruin now. It is older than we. A place for the trial of heretics. We were not here to witness it. But at one time there was a group that refused to acknowledge the gods. Neither the first nor the last, of course. But these were numerous and all put on trial for it. Those who did not repent were cast into the pit and imprisoned below. Hmm. The fall killed them, of course. The prison was not for people, but for their souls. And their sentences were eternal. It is said that many of the condemned repented and were permitted by the gods to ascend from the pit so long as they pledged their service to one of them. Uh -huh. But these are old legends. Yeah, so how could I convince one of them? Behind us is Ter Evron, said to pierce the shroud itself and a place of communion with all gods. If ever there was a time for prayer, you have found it. Who would I pray to? Any god you can, I should think. I would pray first to those gods you like best. I hope for your sake the feeling is shared. Okay. Before you go, tell me this, old one. I'm curious. If you were to subdue your enemy, what would you do with him? What would give you peace? Ooh. I wish to undo the harm he's caused. I don't know that that's possible. Return him to the wheel. Why let him off so easily? You would need a grove of elms like these to create enough parchment to write down his crimes against the world. There must be some greater punishment you can exact. Surely, sister, he must do what is right for him. All the same, think on this matter. Be assured in your course. In the end, it may mean all the difference, not just to his soul. Mm, but, but also to, to mine. And be warned. Some questions have answers that can never be learned. And it is those that trouble the soul above all others. May you find an answer to yours. All right, this is where I was at the end of the last session, but I didn't save it and I had to restart the game. Um, but now that we're caught up, pray to the gods at Tyr Evron. So right in front of us. So in we go. I don't think my character follows any deities, so this will be an interesting course.
the shrine says before a bright constellation. I don't remember who's who. Gawain. Armorgund. Barath is the god in the second game. That much I remember, so let's just pray to Barath. Oh man, do I have to know the answers to this? I'm gonna go look this up. Because I did not remember. Huh. I don't remember this at all. Well, we're about to find out. Um, prepare to recite the rest of words. Hang on. Go back. I'm totally looking some stuff up right now because I don't remember this at all. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh yeah, I do not have the uh, desire to um, read through all of these. There's life and death and death and life. There's a rippling shift in the air around you as if some unfelt wind has, wind has changed, bringing expected warmth. You feel the particular weight of an unseen presence and divides upon you. You kneel and pray to Bereth. While your eyes are closed, you see a road that seems to stretch on forever. Stars wheel overhead in a clockwork rotation of constellations, disappearing over the horizon to your left, only to rise on your right. You try to make out the details on either side of the road, but your eyes can't seem to focus. One moment, you think you see a meadow blanketed with mist, and another, sheer canyon walls. For just an instant, you even see the waves lapping at the edges of the road. Were you to step into the shifting landscape, you feel certain you would only end up back on the road. You know this is a vision. The packed dirt feels warm beneath your feet, and the night air cool in your face. You are walking. Your feet seem to carry you forward of your own accord. Something looms ahead of you. As you get closer, you see two stone figures that look strangely familiar. The two faces of Sir what we call Bath. She shudders slightly, her feathers ruffling as she peers at the figures with apprehension. You remember the door to the Clement Rilleg and the two figures carved into the mountain next to it. One looks vaguely male and the other vaguely female. Only a thin layer of flesh covers their skeletal bodies, which twists to face the doorway between them. The doorway, however, is not what you saw in the ruins. It's a skull, gaping and jawless, and as you look on, its open mouth seems to grow. The arms of the two stone the arms of the two stone sculptures are swept towards the mouth, inviting you in. This means we have to go in. The road continues through the maw to another shifting landscape surrounded by stars. As you pass through it, you see an identical doorway in the distance. A dwarven man stands near it, unmoving. You turn and look behind you, only to see the skull gate you just passed facing you. An elven woman waits in the road. Like the dwarf, she stands still. Does it matter? I don't remember. She was the elf. You start towards her. There's something unnatural about the way she stands. She's too still. When you get closer, you see that her legs taper into a slender trunk, and in place of her feet are gnarled, twisting roots. She lifts her face to an invisible sun. Her long golden hair is the color of autumn leaves, and as you look more closely, you realize that her head is actually covered with tendrils and vines sprouting brilliant yellow leaves. Each glimmers with the essence of an entire soul. She gives you a beatific smile. As you look on, the leaves slowly fall from her head and settle to her roots. 
They melt on to the path beneath her, and almost immediately new leaves sprout in place of the old. She reaches out two. Still smiling as roots spring from her finger tips, her outstretched arms bar the path. Come! Graft your soul to the golden grove. Hey, we're in this for the ride right now, so... Let's graft. Her roots twine around your fingers, and as they do, they grow rigid and cold. Her outstretched arm petrifies, and as a rough stone bark overtakes her flesh, she can only look on in horror. You break away from her brittle grasp. Her roots are rooted in, her feet are rooted in place, but she twists and writhes as if trying to flee her own dying limb. The petrification reaches her shoulder and spreads down her body, freezing in a painful arc. It creeps up her neck, and she throws her face skyward like a drowning swimmer. The grayness covers her, freezing her grasp in stone. Now that she is still and lifeless, you can continue past her. It's not what I wanted to happen, that's kind of creepy. So it's only the dwarven man. He looks up as you approach, but you can't tell if he's looking at you or through you. His face is smooth, flaccid, as if the flesh is detached from the muscles beneath. And as you look on, his mouth begins to change. His face, I should say. Wrinkles crack in the corners of his eyes. His mouth sinks, carving deeper lines from his nose to the corner of his lips. His jowls sag, and the loose flesh hangs like dough. He raises his cupped hands. They're covered in blood. He lifts them to his face and smears himself from his newly creased forehead to the wattles of his neck. As he massages the dark, sticky fluid into his skin, the fresh wrinkles disappear. The hanging folds recede, and his flesh tightens as if re-adhering to his skull. He lifts his head, and this time you know he's looking at you. His renewed face looks like a mask, artificially smooth and still. Behind it, his black eyes are two hungry pits, yawning like the empty mouths of skulls. Come. Make your sacrifice to ethic goal. Well, we are in this for the ride, so take his hand. You grab his hand, but his skin gives too easily under your grip. As you try to pull away, you hear a noise like dried canvas tearing. His skin splits, following a long seam. begins at his arm and stretches the length of his body. Blood gushes forth in such quantities that you can't imagine that there was anything else in him. Sure enough, as the dwarf empties his blood, he collapses like a desiccated husk. The blood of the path gleams with a thousand swirl souls worth of essence, which evaporates, trailing shining filaments into the night sky. Only now that he's dead can you continue onwards. The blood pools around your feet, and a voice echoes along the road, barely more than a whisper of the breeze. Return them to the wheel. You look up and see the skull gate ahead of you. The candles of Tyr Evron wait for the open mouth. Alright, so clearly we've gotten the gods' attention. And the instructions are to return them to the wheel. End the lives of the two figures from Bareth's vision. Oof. That's intense. Interesting. All right, well, I think we're done in here. I don't need to do another one, do I? Have I earned divine favor? Hmm. Yeah. To earn favor, I'll have to complete the task given to me in the vision. Birth give me a vision of a dwarf and an elf and an ear road, both perished at my touch. Um. So is that going to go under tasks, or where did it go? Servant of Death, it's a quest. Okay, um, in the lives of the two figures from Bareth's vision, um, Bareth, the, death, the god of death and rebirth, showed me a vision of an elven woman and dwarven man stepped in a road. Okay, okay. Two individuals who have cheated 
Okay, these two individuals have achieved death for too long. Any of their lives are dead out. Please bear. Okay. Golden Grove and Ethic Knoll. Don't remember. I don't remember any of it. Oh, the Golden Grove is one place we could go. Right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Elven Woman in the Golden Grove. Well, that Golden Grove is right there. Hear that? About our awakenings being permanent? Yeah, what's up, bro? If those Delamgon are right, you and I are stuck with our awakenings. Not quite the news I was hoping for. Hmm. Just means we gotta focus on finding Theos. Yes, focus on the goal. A sensible perspective. Particularly in the midst of such uncertainty. Absolutely. And while I hate to turn the subject back to myself, this all has me thinking about Isselmir. I'm stuck with her now. You've been awake for decades. Did you really think anything would change? I suppose not, but hope is an unchaste mistress. I could agree with that. On the bright side, I've got plenty of time to figure out how to deal with her. She could be a source of strength if you learn to work with her. It's strange. I've lived with her most of my life, and I've always seen her as an adversary. It should have occurred to me the day she stood up to my father. But there's something about being too close to a situation to see it clearly. It'll be a relief to stop fighting her. Even as he says it, something struggles within him. The muscles in his face twitch and his skin quivers. His eyes roll back in the head, exposing slivers of white. Sweat beads and glistens on his forehead. After several seconds, he sighs and looks back at you. It wasn't as difficult as I expected. I think deep down I'd always hoped to find a solution somewhere. When I was a child, I always thought my mother would come home with a mysterious cure, or that my father, without knowing it, could somehow send her away, just as he called her forth. I can't pretend that I didn't spend years of my arcane training hoping one of my instructors would have the answer somewhere in his grimoire. When I joined the Leaden Key, I hoped and believed that with enough loyal service I'd gain the ear of someone in the organization who could help me. Even when I met you and realized your unique talents, I hoped that you might be able to reach into my soul the way I've seen you do with so many others. I've been looking for someone else to solve my problem, and now I realize I've got to face it on my own. That's how it's supposed to be. You search for answers elsewhere and find them in yourself. Well, that's a charming way to think of things. And not an unpleasant one, either. That reminds me of something else the Delamgon said. About the gods not being real. He says it quietly, as if afraid someone might overhear him. We'll figure out what it means eventually. Yes, I suppose so. Still, I can't help but worry at the state we'd be in if that was somehow true. If there were no power guiding us in this life and shepherding us to the next. Hmm. I'm sure we'd find our way on our own. I hope you're right. We should get moving. Alright. Somewhere in here is apparently... Builder's wisdom to you. The elf holds a chipped wooden pipe. The sweet smoke wafting from the bowl makes you dizzy. Welcome, Estramore. I've got herbs and potions for sale. Looking for something to ease your travels? Or something to make them more interesting? When she grins, you can see her teeth and gums are stained brown. Phew, white leaf. Nice way to fit an afternoon. And the following night, and most of the next day. Um, I mean, I have a couple of things I can sell, but not a lot.
An elf with placid green eyes nods in greeting. Welcome to the Golden Gove, traveler. Builder's wisdom to you. Lead your order. I'd like to know more about Arona. The mighty elm who has lived for generations. That certainly sounds like someone who has lived too long. Why, you must meet her for yourself. She is wise and kind and has led our order from the beginning. Yet she walks among us and gives freely of herself. She turns her gaze to the great twisting elms. This is what so many of us cherish about her. She is present among us in the way that the gods never are. High Ovate Arona. The bark feels warm. The roots almost seem to twine around your hand. Where am I going to find her? Until I run to speak with Iswold. Well, where is she? Hmm. Builder's wisdom to you. So are there, I don't see the, um, I don't see the high druid here. So where is she at? That's a good question. Doop, 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 doop. What's this quest called? Uh, it's this quest, Servant of Death. I'm going to read up on this really quickly. Elm Shore. Okay. Away we go, doing some traveling. Question is, where are they going to be at? Oh, that looks like a looks like something north of me. I heard noise. What just what just went down? Druga Dragos, thank you so much. Back again. How are things in your part of the world, sir? Six months as a member of the channel. Awesome. Thank you so much. I don't know that I've had the chance to catch up with you since around the uh, first of the year, I think. Sometime early January. How are things going, Druga? totally was right. This is where I came last. I was here like, I don't even remember now, a while back. All right.
An elf stands on a dais in the middle of a clearing. The ground is blanketed with leaves in various shades of russet and gold. Her eyes are closed and her arms folded in front of her. A curtain of autumnal yellow hair hangs in front of her face. As you draw near, she lifts her chin and smiles at you with shifting hazel eyes. Greetings, Estramor. You are among the ovates of the Golden Grove. Bereth has sent me. At least he chose someone who wouldn't wrap her intentions in trickery and lies. But what is a god that his voice should carry so far? And what are you that you should so eagerly obey? The gods only have dominion over what we seed, and you would seed matters of life and death to them. Study, study, study. On Session University. Well, good luck with that. Hopefully you will kick ass in the exams. We actually just had our, our niece. She's not in university, but she's... um, This is her last year in Secundaria, I think is what they call it here. But it's high school, essentially. This is her last year, and then she goes to university. So we were... She stayed the weekend with us, and we had a, we had a good chat this morning about career paths and... Um, I get to be in a position of offering her an alternative viewpoint because I do think she, she I do think that she should go to college because I never got to go to university and I've done well for myself with no education, but if I could do it over again, I would definitely go to university. And so we're just talking to her and giving uh, giving her some perspective about things to look at and study. And she has exams coming up this week as well. I didn't seat half my face to Glan with voice. I wish her sentiment to be true, but Aegis has made her ripe with folly. The gods may be fickle and hard to know, but they are not constrained by our permission. So my response to her is, are you any different? You've extended your life beyond its natural span. Through work and wisdom, the greater the tree, the more fruit it may yield. They are vines climbing an ancient elm unto the sunlight. My growth sustains them. Should our harmony fall prey to a god's jealousy? And where exactly should she lead them? She's blind to the limits of her own wisdom. Hmm. I need... Oh, man. Man, I don't know what this character would... He hasn't been religious to date, so I don't know that he would say... The gods are wise. He would say, I need Barris aid. This is what he asked of me. <laughs> Sorry, lady. <laughs> A lot of magical booty. Well, that's that. And from here, we can go down here. I wish I had some talks about careers when I was in high school. Yeah, I think, so I don't know how it's like where you're at in, in Romania, Druga, but I know the one issue, like, in, in, it's a little different here in Mexico, where I'm at right now, but in the United States, it's, it's very poorly explained. Basically, the whole, in my opinion, in the U.S., it's, it's mostly about, you know, I, if I go to a bank as a 17-year-old kid, and I go to the bank with a business plan, and I ask the bank to loan me $50,000 to start a business, they're going to laugh at me and call me an idiot. But I can go get a $70,000 student loan at the same age to go to university and put myself $70,000 into debt for a degree that in most cases isn't going to even be worth it by the time I get out. It's a very... It's not a great system in the U.S. Um, and no one gives you career path advice they just tell you to go to college because you'll figure it out when you get there and it's like no if i'm going to spend seventy thousand dollars on something i, I want to know that i'm going to get a return on investment because that's a huge thing um so we were having a discussion today about if she's serious about going into college which she should be i was like you need to be aware of you know career paths it's like ultimately you want to do something that you have fun doing um, because then it won't feel like work, but you also want to find something that you can do that is going to earn you a good living. Because if you go to college with like the desire to be like an art degree, 
to I want to be an artist. You don't need a college degree to become an artist. You can just paint, put a portfolio on the internet, and you will find work as an artist. It's not difficult to get work as an artist. The same thing with being a writer. Um, I can go out and find work if I want work. Um, but other things like she's expressed interest in, you know, perhaps going into dentistry or becoming a doctor or, you know, she likes working with people and, you know, it's like, well, that's a great career path, but you have to understand that that's 10 years. You know, if you want to become a doctor anywhere in the world, you're looking at eight to 10 years of university. Um, yeah. And, and. Oh, so you're on your, yeah, on your second specialty and you need to pay this time. Correct. So you're getting your second. So that's what I was explaining to her today was like, you could go get a short degree and do something low key, or you can get, you know, an advanced degree and spend eight to 10 years in college, but you get a doctorate out of it. And ultimately you can go on and have a good career. Um, but also understand that you're, you got to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice those like eight years to becoming educated. You don't just get to go to college and, you know, party and have fun. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, that's what she wants to do. She's wanting to study, study general medicine. Was What we discussed today was like, because they can study to be... Uh, so where we are located is at a very small town. Um, it's a city. There is a, There are a couple of small universities here, but they're not, they're not... They don't really offer a lot of options. Like They only offer to be like the paramedic. You know, So if she wants to learn general medicine, she has to go to the nearest city. Um, and so that's one of the discussions we were having today was like starting to budget and think and plan ahead about how much it's going to cost to live in the city and looking at what grants or um, scholarships might be available and also just talking, you know, housing and what that would look like so that, you know, she's our niece, but Chris and I are very, um, we try to be parental figures. Um, she doesn't have a dad in her life. Um, and so we, we try to be good parental figures. And I mean, we've, we've, I remember when we first lived here in 2014, she would have been nine, eight, something like that. She, she was single digits. And I remember I was carrying her backpack with her. I would take her backpack and take her to school every morning. And then either Chris or I would pick her up in the afternoon. But a lot of times we just, Chris and I would go together and take her to school. Um, and, um, those book bags were heavy. I'll never forget that because she was like a, you know, a little kid and like her book bag weighed like 30 kilos, you know, 30 kilograms. It was, it was pretty crazy. Anyway, now she's an adult, you know, so we're trying to, trying to help her, you know, give her some good advice, let her pick what she wants to do, but also giving her real world advice. Cause I was telling her, you know, I never went to college, you know, I never went to college. I never even finished high school. I turned out okay. Like, I've done all right for myself, but I've also had to work way harder than most people have to work to make things happen because I don't have any degrees or any co any uh, high school education. So I've had to just go out there and make it happen. So it's a little, you know, it's worked out, but it's been very, 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 um, not everyone can do this. It takes a certain mentality to go out there and do it the way I did it. The tax for one year is 1800 us dollars. Um, Gotcha. So yeah, she might go to general medicine. I also was talking to her about, um, you know, they have a in in here in Mexico they have. Um, hang on, I gotta pay attention to where I'm going here. I think it's back to Elms Reach. big thing right now is like with the um yeah she's pretty good right now um she's still got another year and a half two to go so um it's just that she happened to be having a conversation with chris yesterday about stuff while i was working and then um we went for a walk this morning we got back from the walk and we just sat down and had a 20 minute talk about things because um she's a good kid and if we can help you know but at least i've showed her two sides of the equation the way i did it the way you can do it. Here are your options. The good thing is that university here doesn't cost like it does in the U.S. or other places. I um, It's much more affordable. And there's lots of um, governmental help to get to school if you have good grades. So she's doing good.
All right, this is the ethic knoll. Your sacrifice feeds the land supplicants. Come forth. They suddenly flex. Estramor. The dwarf holds his fist to the tight grip. Your kin doesn't come here to share with the tribes. What do you want? Tell me about it, Knoll. That's who we are. Dwarf picks on his scarred forearm. His guttural sigh mingles with the crackling of wood and bones behind him. As I said, Estamoran rarely visit our halls. Our order has thrived for generations. Before we came to Twin Elms, our rights fed the lands of the Eastern Mountains. Now, we share blood for Er Glanfeth. Garrus opens his palm. Strikes of red skin run through them like flames. To everything that must end, our sacrifices bring a new beginning. We sustain what's to come. Okay. Remember, Estramor, you're a guest of these halls. Respect our ways and we'll tolerate your presence among us. That didn't tell me a lot. Um... They're about to sacrifice themselves for... The petitioner... Okay. Alright, she wants to be left alone to her meditations. Hang on, that guy's got a knife? Maybe it wasn't a knife. It looked like a knife. I don't know where I'm supposed to go, to be honest with you. Let's go back all the way here and see if there's like a chamber or something. Oh yeah, totally. I shall be discreet. I'm trying to find something going down here so I can find the old dwarf that I need to find. Ooh, what is that? Earth blight. What's up, Slander? Is this modded? No, I'm just I'm on the quick mode, which you could turn off. Um, it's what do they call it? Fast mode? Yeah, fast mode. So I just had fast mode turned on. Keep it with her. The elderly dwarf blinks at you, not quite looking at you. Her eyes are pale and clouded with cataracts. Welcome to Blood Sands. It is rare that an Estramar sets foot in these caverns. Her sightless eyes fix on you as she tilts her head. What brings you here, I wonder? What do you do here? I sell and maintain certain goods for the preservation of our order, and I perform some of our ritual sacrifices. How do the sacrifices work? Like any worthwhile ritual, it's too complex to explain in detail. It involves clotting the supplicant's essence, binding it to their life's blood, and drawing it into a container or a vessel. Alright. She hasn't told me anything new. I'm pretty close to the end. Yeah, I don't know if I finish it up to. I don't think I can finish it up today, because I, I usually don't stream more than a couple hours, so... I actually haven't even been able to play this game for about two weeks because I've been busy with all sorts of stuff around the house and just doing a ton of video production around all the tabletop stuff and buying new tabletop books and researching. So I'm glad to finally be able to get back into this. Um, but I also have never played the White Marsh expansion. So I think as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to turn around and do that because the complete edition came with all of that. So um, I've still got plenty of plenty of content left. Because I've never, I've never played through those expansions before. There we go. This is what I was looking for. As your blood flows, so shall your essence. Your life's energy shall feed the soil. And your soul's energy shall enrich the community. 
This is by your own choosing, Sublicant. Yes. The elf's voice is high but uneven. The dwarf grips a hatchet with both hands and raises it over his head. He throws his shoulders forward and swings the weapon onto the elf's chest, connecting with a meaty thump. Blood gushes around the blade, and the sacrifice's screams rend the air. Ravius's hand clutches his chest as his eyes widen in amazement. I, I did say I wanted to see the teachings of other druids, but I, I think I was imagining more, uh, dried herbs and chanting? We never did that in my circle back home. Never! Despite his earlier agreement, the elf thrashes atop the stone table, his torso arcing while his arms arching, sorry, while his arms and legs remain tied in place. Meanwhile, the dwarf spreads his arms wide and allows blood to splatter his robes. When the elf is finally silent and still, the dwarf pulls his hatchet from the body and wipes it on his hem. That was not pleasant. White Marsh is pretty awesome for sure. Did you do the endless paths? Uh, I think up to level. I don't remember now. Level seven or level nine? I reached a I reached a point where I was no longer able to pick the locks or disarm any of the traps because I'm only using Durant's this time around, so I don't actually have a thief in my party. So I've just been leveling up Durant's mechanics because he had those when you grabbed him um, in the party. Um, so I've I've and I haven't gone back in a long time. So I'm I'm only it's got to be seven. I don't think it was nine. I think I was only seven levels down. There's what fifteen. It's been a while, I don't remember. Archdruid Reston. The dwarf wears crimson robes that are stained and streaked with dark patches. His faith is smooth but lacking youthful elasticity. It's as if the lines and wrinkles have been formed and erased many times over. He watches you with eyes like two black pits as he wipes his hatchet on his robes. Hail, Estramor. No one comes to Blood Sands without a purpose. What is yours? Bareth believes it's time you've paid your dues. Then he can descend from his mighty pantheon and tell me himself. Actually, that's why I'm here. Since when do the gods send mortals to collect? You're much too talkative to be the usher. This is the trouble with deities. They meddle in a world that they don't even inhabit. I hope they've promised you something better for your next life. I must be out of spells because my guys are taking forever to kill stuff. That's awesome. Oh, she's immune. I'm actually gonna. sword you give me any more gifts and people will start thinking you're playing favorites so it says there are 15 levels yeah um i did um <laughs> i only took her Aveus, um because i've never run with him before um the first time i ever played through the game i did the grieving mother um but i've never ran with the druid before and i i think i did the first playthrough, because I played through as a rogue the first time, I took the ranger the first time too. That ranger you come across with like the fox or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but I had never taken the druid before, so I did it this time around. Um, am I a Dragon Age fan? Absolutely. Did I look at the leaks? You, your tweet actually got me looking at the leaks today, Slandered. Because um, you made a tweet earlier today. I went and looked. I am... It's, oh man, the problem with Dragon Age, I love that franchise. That that first Dragon Age, Dragon Age Origins, was one of the coolest games I've ever played because it was everything that I wanted it to be. It was like a CRPG top down, but you could go into like, you know, sort of like a over the shoulder mode, sort of. But you had the party configuration, you had AI for the party. Um, there were so many options for your starters and and the quest lines and the romances and all the side stories and everything else. Um, the um, Dragon Age Origins was an amazing game, and I lost myself like eight eight months in that game when it first launched. 
Dragon Age 2 came out and they completely changed the style of the game. It was no longer the you know that same party system, um, completely different characters, completely different everything, um, different play style and everything else. And it was like okay, I mean it was fun, but it it wasn't in in my mind as good as the first one. But that's a personal opinion. Then Inquisition came out. I'll I'll, I'll be honest with you. I I. The first time I tried to play Inquisition, I didn't like it because it was, and again, it was a different presentation of gameplay style. It was not Dragon Age Origins. It was, instead of being like the top down everything else, it was a completely different type of game. It was more like an open world um, with some party members. I don't know. I just didn't feel like Dragon Age Inquisition was that good with the first time I played it. And I actually didn't finish my first playthrough and I didn't come back to it until I don't know, five or six years after Inquisition had been out and then I played it and I was like you know what as far as storyline goes it was a pretty good storyline I still don't like the gameplay in, Inquisi- in Inquisition compared to um, Dragon Age Origins but that's a me thing that, that's a me thing um, I have since come to appreciate Inquisition a little bit more having to have her played you know like the new Mass Effect and everything else and I'm like okay I could see where they were going with this now and have a better appreciation for it it is concerning to me if they're going for the action combat style in the new game. If, and I stress the if, if the story's not there. Because again, it's another 180, right? And it sounds so different from everything we've ever seen before. My gut reaction is to panic. But then at the, at the back of my mind, I'm also like, yeah, but... But... If this is a battle of wills, Watcher... I surrender. Um, You'll never know I'm here. On the same, on that same token, I love the God of War games. Like those two games were freaking amazing. And if, and I stretch, I stress the if here. If Bioware could pull that off and make a gameplay experience that is as rich and triple A production, polish level ready as God of War, then that would be a holy shit experience. They would be amazeballs. But Bioware does not have the best track record in recent years of putting forth... No, he doesn't. Durance is a whiny little bitch. Um, I, you know, Bioware hasn't you know, established a lot of confidence in recent years because of like bugs with um, Mass Effect Andromeda, bugs with etc., Anthem, and etc., that's the problem. That's, that's that's exactly what you just said. Um, love God of War, but I have a hard time believing that Bioware is capable of creating something God of War-esque. I, I agree because they don't have as big of a budget. They've never done it before. That doesn't mean it's not possible. It doesn't mean it's not possible because I will say this. A lot of people like to shit on Anthem because there were bugs at launch. I defy anyone out there to go play Anthem now that all the bugs have been wrinkled out. Go play that game now, and you will find a solid, like, 10-hour gaming experience that is fun as shit. Extremely great gameplay. The flying is amazing. The storyline is amazing. The cutscenes are amazing. The animation is amazing. It is an amazing experience now that it's been polished. But it took them a fucked-up launch to get it to that point. And that's the problem I have, is, like, if they're trying to do that with the next Dragon Age game, I'm terrified because I've seen them botch launches before and they don't need another failure. They don't need another failed launch. So in my mind, it would be much better to stick to something that you know and put out a really good experience. Um, there aren't very many out there, Slandered. Um, my brother and I, I pre-ordered that game for my brother and I um, because I think it was like a Christmas launch or I can't remember when it... I'm going to go look it up right now, because now you're going to make me um, think back. Anthem. Launch date. February 22nd, 2019. Um, I think what it was, was I, I, I pre-ordered that game for my brother for Christmas. Um, and we were both highly anticipating it. We, I bought it for our PS4s, and we both went and played it on launch weekend i played it before him and i i played through all the way i maxed out a character before he got to play because i was like this is so much fun um 
And then he played it. But the problem was there were so many blue screen crashes on the PlayStation 4 launch and server outages. And it was just, it was a buggy launch. And it was every time we played, every time we played. If we played for two hours, 30 minutes would be spent staring at blue screens. No fucking joke. Like, it was that bad of a launch. Um, and we still, we played through it, powered through it, had fun, loved it. The end game sucked when it came out, and then they just lost steam because no one wanted to play a buggy game, and so that was a big issue for them. Was it just it it because of the buggy launch, it didn't get the release that it should have had. Um, I still had fun playing it by myself because the missions scale in level difficulty depending on whether it's just you or two people or three people or four people. So it's going to scale in difficulty, so you can still play it and have a very fun ten hour. I think it's around 10 hours of gameplay. Let me go look now. Um, how long is Anthem's story mode? I want to say it's like 8 to 10 hours. Oh, it says here um, Anthem is about um, 13 and a half hours if you just focus on the main objectives. I remember it being a little shorter than that, so um, maybe I'm misremembering. But it says here 13 and a half hours for that playthrough experience. Um, it's out there now for such a cheap amount. Like you, I think I saw the other day that someone was doing a TikTok about Anthem being like three dollars or something on one of the digital stores. If you can get Anthem for five bucks or ten bucks or something, it's totally worth playing, just for the single player storyline because you're gonna get that, you know, twelve to fifteen hours of single player storyline with really good cutscenes and great voice acting and a really fun story that just ultimately didn't pan out. Obviously, that's my opinion. Um, the gameplay was the issue, not the story and everything else. And the flying, honestly, the flying is so good. Because anybody who's out there, one of the things that people praised about the Marvel Avengers game that just went under, no one had anything to say or complain about when it came to like the flight stuff with Iron Man. Like There was a lot of fun to fly around in that game, and Anthem did it before that. And it was really fun because it was very much like everyone was Iron Man and just flying around and dodging things left and right and it the, the, the flight in that game was a hell of a lot of fun and it was kind of like it was like they were trying to make their own version of destiny 2 because yeah, you know you have a base and then you do operations out of that base i need to pay attention for a second <laughs> i need to return to bareth probably got to fight our way out now I'm also playing this on easy mode this time around, because um, I just wanted to play this for the story. It's it's really nice because I could just cruise around and just sort of let everybody do their things. There have been a few fights though that I've still had to do the old pause and um, fight manual mode. Not very often though. Mostly I've just been doing this story. Where's the exit? <laughs> Probably nothing I need to loot. No, honestly, I don't need to loot anymore. Uh, this is a, um, elven ranger, uh, ranger, with a wolf pet. Which, this was another one I had never done before, um. My first playthrough was a, uh, rogue. I always do a rogue the first playthrough of any of these games, because there's so many traps and doors and things you come across that I'm always terrified of not finding a rogue NPC. So I almost always play a rogue first time. Not almost always. Every single time I play a CRPG, I play a rogue first. And then next time, I'll usually play a, a wizard of some type on the way through. And then if I ever get to a third playthrough is when I do the ranger. So this is my third playthrough, so I got around to the ranger. The only other game that I've done like more than three times was Baldur's Gate 2. Um, Baldur's Gate 2, I think I did 
man, I think I did six or seven times in a row, but that was way back in the day when there weren't all these other game options, so. You know, it was like the only thing that we had on the PC, so just that's all I played. Because like right now, I'm, I'm, I want to finish this game, but I'm also playing The Last of Us Remastered Version, Red Dead Redemption 2, and um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for my own personal enjoyment. Um, but I'm also uploading those episodes at, every day at 5 p.m. for these little like 15 to 30 minute episodes. I'm not really streaming those games though, so there's I'm like playing four different things right now, and it's it's a lot. Which one's is this? Was this? Yeah, pray to Bareth. As you pray to Bareth, you again find yourself on the road. Squinting into the distance, you see a short, pale figure waiting for you. At first, you think it's another vision of Archdruid Reston, but then you notice the figure's skeletal frame and ripped grin. He stands in front of another skull gate. The way leads down on onward. He beckons for you to approach. That must be the usher. Alos' voice is low. Behind you is a woman, her skin milk pale against her black hair. She wears a suit of armor so dark it seems to be it seems to suck the light from the stars. The road winds up about behind her. A toll, traveler. Ooh, I gotta pay a toll. I'll answer that in just a second, Slander, because there's two things that you said there. And the Pallet Knight. Um, pay the Pallet Knight. The Lord of this land demands a toll of all, but he needs generously that all might travel from this road again. The Usher and Pallet Knight leave a trail on at the edge of the cavern. Alright, let me answer that. Um... Yeah, before I had a channel, I would only buy two or three games a year, and I would just repeatedly play them. Yeah, that's totally legit. Uh, I played the Mass Effect series and Dragon Age series multiple times through. I know I've done Dragon Age Origins three times. I don't think I've ever done a fourth, though. Um, Mass Effect I did twice, and then the Legendary Edition, which was my third. Do I plan on playing Hogwarts? Originally, I did plan. I did plan on paint. I did originally plan on playing Hogwarts. Here's what happened. The Last of Us launched on HBO, and it's such a good show that it made me gonna want to go back and replay The Last of Us. So I'm, I'm, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna play The Last of Us right now because it's, it's, I haven't played it since 2018, I think. And I only played it through the one time. So I remember some of it, but not all of it. So I've been trying to play that game enough so that I'm sort of around the same point in the game as each of the episodes that come out and so far I've been right around that point um, so if I do play Hogwarts it's going to be later in the year also I was really happy to see um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor got pushed back to the end of April because now I have um, we, may, we may be starting a Starfinder group on my channel here in March. I've got my brother confirmed, one of my community members, Lance and Gila, is confirmed, and then two of my brother's real life buddies who we've played tabletop with in the past. We've also played Star Wars Yoda Public and um, um, The Lord of the Rings Online together. My brother's played Divinity Sin, or Divinity Original Sin 2 with them. So that we've all sort of played together for me. It's my brother's friends from grade school, um, but they're much younger than me. So. Um, so since we're going to be kicking that off sometime in March I was really glad to see that Jedi Survivor got pushed back because I'll be busy doing table some more table stop stuff in um, March alright the usher points to the road I'm standing in one of the eye sockets of a massive skull Archdroid Reston appears below me he's just as you remembered him stern and smooth skin and with each step along the road he grows swelling with blood and essence his heavy steps become slower and slower until he stops altogether. His distended body fills the path completely. By the way, yes, if you're planning on watching Last of Us next week, it's really, really good. Reston had stood in place for too long. I really said it would be again. The pallid knight's flesh is taut against her skull. She nods once, barely dipping her chin. Life is all right, see you, Slandered Men. Beginnings and endings. 
Thank you much, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for stopping and dropping by. Also, I love the, uh, I think it was called Shadow, Shadow something, Shadow Bane, Shadow Run you played the other day. That looks really interesting. I'm going to have to go check it out now. So, I promoted that this morning. I think I was telling you during this morning's stream to go check that out because I'm intrigued because we were talking about CRPGs during the live stream this morning. And that was one I hadn't seen. I, I don't know anything about that trilogy of games or however many games there are in that series until I saw your video and then I was like, oh, that, I may, maybe I've heard of that name, but I don't know if I've ever watched those games. So, all right, man, have fun on your channel work. See you next time, Slander. Everybody make sure to go follow Slander over his channel, especially if you like CRPG stuff. All right. As Reston's swollen body ruptures, the effect is like a dam bursting. The ghostly figures, as hazy and indistinct as wisps of smoke, continues along the cleared path. Some tumble and rush along, while others amble and drift, but all continue forward. The usher directs your attention to another figure moving down the path. This time, you see the high ovate Arona. She follows the road, her movements become slow and erratic. Her legs creak with each step, and her feet grow long, thick roots that burrow into the ground. She finally stops, rooted in place. Shadow Run, that's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. Alright, um. It was a parasite while its branches sheltered others, its roots sucked them dry. All draw their life's energy from the depths of others. Oh! This is why all must remain part of the cycle of uh -huh. death and rebirth. No creature may be a closed loop. But what about you as the gods? Are you allowed to be a closed loop? Why do I seek Thales? I seek a resolution. The only resolution is a clean state. An end that leads to a new beginning. Well said. You can't blossom into a new person until you sever the disease roots. But Theos will remain to explain himself, even if we have to tear the answers out of him. Theos serves Wodeka. She desires an escape from her own cycle. Power without decline. Theos has removed thousands of souls from the cycle so that their essence might empower her. You must stop him, and you must return them to the cycle. Why does Wodeka even need Theos' help? Why do you need mine? The gods guide souls through the cycle of death and rebirth, but error is the domain of mortals. We stand aside, waits, counterweights. Were one to alter the tides of Kith, all would follow. We would tip this world from its axis. That's why Wodeka directs a mortal to do her bidding, and why any who would stop Theos must be mortal as well. Alright. We must go to Sun and Shadow. No mortal can survive the descent. Turn them to the cycle, Watcher. Promise that you will, and I will give you power for bidding the champion. And I do. I promise to return the skulls to the cycle. The usher reaches out to places a bony hand on your forehead. His touch overwhelms you, and you feel yourself expand. Blinded, you reach out, only to find another grasping hand of the same size and shape as yours reaching back. Navin Greta's Bereth's boom. When last you open your eyes again, you are standing in Terra Evron, filled with Bereth's power. Sweet. All right, I got to go to the burial pit or burial aisle. But first, I need a bio. I'll be right back, guys.
let's do this. I should check that sword I bought. Not bought, got. It's a saber. It's going to be good for him. <clears throat> yeah, let's upgrade it too. All right. Let's do secondary damage. I don't know what we're going to be going up against. Um, maybe spirit? Don't know. I could also do her slain. Put hers on vessel. Mine's already good to go. What about his? Nope, slain is not set. Let's do primordial. I'm doing like different ones for everybody. All right, I'm good. Oh, what's this? Stop right there. Why? The Phantom You're in Soul. The wrong city, Inquisitor. Did you think you wouldn't be recognized here in your old home? I've seen your trials with my own eyes. <clears throat> I've seen you light pyres with good people tied to them. People I'd known many a year. They deserve your confession. Soros, what are you doing? Startled, the soldier releases you immediately and turns to face the speaker, a woman in a plain wool tunic, fully head shorter than he, but somehow seeming to tower over him. You have seen this woman's face before, but from afar, bloodied and burned as she lay stretched across an iron wheel. At the moment, it is marked only with concern. An assassin sent by the Inquisition, my lady, daring to approach our camp. If he is so poor an assassin as to approach an armed guard in daylight, I would have nothing to fear. I would hear what this man has to say. She stares him down until he can no longer face her. He turns away, sour-faced, watching you with sidelong glances, his knuckles white around the pommel of his sword. Yavor's... Surely this is some trick of my mind. I did not expect to see you again. Grand Inquisitor Theos dispatched me here to spy on you. Are things as desperate as that over there? I'd never have known. I hope your next assignment is more stimulating. Listening to my lectures is dull work for a spy. It is special to have an old pupil return to me. I must have done something right, even after having taught so much that was wrong. Whatever your reasons, I've missed you over these years. Having you here now at a time when I'm surrounded by strangers is a wonderful gift. I would like for you to stay here in our camp as my guest. My lady Irvara, I beg of you. This is an inquisitor. This is a desperate attempt on your life. The only way it can succeed is if you allow it to. This is a missionary, same as I was. Taught the wrong things as I was. If I can't have faith in one man's ability to reason, once he knows the truth, what hope do we have? My lady, he, he admits being a spy. That should make him less of a threat, wouldn't you agree? I have nothing to hide. All I see here is an opportunity to persuade someone who could help us. We have many former missionaries here. They are our most loyal, our most helpful. Many have died for us. 
These are not people we should be turning away. And if the Inquisition wants my life, they can have it. But they know as well as I do that my cause will not die with me. Just make her a martyr. Come. We have much to talk about. Hmm. Durant wants to talk. What is it, Watcher? Does what we've learned about Wodaka trouble you? It stinks of her. It is justice. But if her greater purpose was to think Margaret would fall prey to such deceit. And Aethys. Widewin had always claimed to be invading Deerwood to free it. What if it were true? What if he had come to stop Woodica's plot before it began? Hmm. Surely Aethys earned his death at Godhammer Citadel, but not for those reasons. Not to keep him silent. If such a thing has brought about this chaos... That's my concern, too. Must we always be tools of gods? If Woodica and Margrin, if they are the cause of this, the Hollowborn, if the purges were never necessary, if Aethys was fighting back... Hmm. So many lives. And Woodica. Perhaps she is the next god to fall beneath the god hammer. Possibly. No. Would have been better if you had spared this knowledge. I am glad to have walked this far with you, seen this truth. Perhaps it was what I was meant to see, with a watcher's eyes. Nice. All these dances of words and intrigues, machines of men. Twisted, ripping the souls of children, and by the gods, the goddess of justice. If I could end her like Aethys, I... Margren burned her once. One can do so again. Woodica, she must answer to her own justice. Okay. Show me your goodies so I can sell them all. I don't need all this shit. What is that? Tiny animal. Oh, it's one of those stupid pets that I don't want. ring buddy all right let's hit the docks district edge whatever <laughs> what do we got tomorrow tomorrow's the fifth right what do I got scheduled for the sixth What about the seventh? Okay, I've got a couple of videos already scheduled for the morning of the seventh. I do need to get some 6 a.m. video. I gotta get a 6 a.m. video ready for the seventh. And a 6 a.m. video for the I don't have any made for the eighth, so. I've got the incarnate map making tutorial on landmass coming. The seventh is Tuesday, right? Yeah, 
that's the next map making episode is on the seventh, followed by the Raymond Feist Rift War Cycle video. And then I have a Last of Us video scheduled for the evening. All right. Burial Isle, that's where we're going. How do I get out there? I guess I have to go to Old Song first. Chris might be home, I don't know. I need to see if that is Chris. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Man, Chris made these, um, you know the big bananas, plantains? I don't suppose so she crushed them up, move on. made like patties, and then breaded them, and fried them. So good.
To the bur isle burial isle we go. Find the court of the penitents. This place is sacred ground, so watch where you step. Okay, bro. I remember when I was a girl, and the missionaries came and told us about the gods. They said we could see them in the stars. I remember when I heard that. I snuck out at night and climbed the watchtower in the old fort because I wanted to see them better. That fort burned down a few years ago when we cast the missionaries out. It was the missionaries who set fire to it. They didn't want us to be able to use it. Shame. There was history in that fort. They'll do a lot worse if they ever return. Those missionaries are all inquisitors now. Strange to think they're the same people underneath. But I suppose you should know. You would know. You called this place home once. Do you worry about it? I worry about you. You should be more worried about yourself. Half the guards still plot your death at night. I miscalculated, I miscalculated many... many things since this began. I'm relieved you weren't one of them. It's a good thing we didn't hang you. <laughs> So I'm influencing the past somewhat, which is cool. I always knew this path would have consequences, but I never wanted to see Kratum suffer on my behalf. I don't think I, I don't can... think I can stay here any longer. Sorry, she has more dialogue. I am told the Inquisition is gathering an army, that they have sent messengers to bargain with rulers from distant lands. Kratum is not built to withstand a siege. I never know which ones are voiced and which ones aren't. <laughs> if war is coming. I should be doing what Theos is doing. I will need allies. Allies on a stronghold that can resist an invading army. You can feel words formed from long ago rising in your throat like toxic black bile. Have you thought about Os Osinos? Osinos? Osionos. Osionos. They have held off many would-be invaders, and their king has no love of the Inquisition's faith. I wonder, would he listen? All right. Obviously, something going on here. Backstory. Uh oh, why did it auto pause? Something happened. I don't know what it was. I don't need any of these oh, things. So. Yeah. issues there. Grotto of Echoes. Oh, can I not get across that? Alright. thought it might be a fallen tree, but it's a, it's a normal tree. Herpa derpa! Oh, this is cool. There's primordial inspectors and spirits, so I've, I've my weapon mods that I did get to affect them. That's awesome. Ah! <laughs> 
this. Oh, I hit cancel on accident. Whatever. He's good. Another turn, Inquisitor. They have signaled some unseen attendant standing beside the large crank. Hey, Varus. I ask again, Yovara Ixensios, do you confess to these heresies of which you stand accused? He waits, but Yovara only stands straight ahead, her face stony, the creak of her restraints the only sound. Do you confess to apostasy? She opens her mouth I to speak. I confess to renouncing a mistake. Do you confess to conspiracy against the one true faith? I confess to opening minds. Do you confess to false prophecy? I confess to following a false prophet. Indeed. And where might we find this heretic? He wears the robes of a Grand Inquisitor. You have no followers here, heretic. Your lies hold no sway in the court of the penitents. Only my truth, then. Another turn. No! Wait! Wait! I'm ready. I'm ready. Jesus, this is intense. You are ready to give a confession? I am ready to hear one from you. Zeus shakes his head and points at the Inquisitor, and the scraping grind of rusted gears echoes in your mind as the apparitions fade away. Um, we should probably camp here if we can. Yeah, let's do a hard save. Because guess what we're about to do? If this doesn't inspire faith in the gods, I don't know what will. All right, we all got to level up. So first, we need to do that. Is it passive? No, I want passive stuff. Do bonus fourth level. So many level lean ups to do. I don't like any of those. I 
love that helmet he's got. Wall of Force. Group of enemies. I like it. Ooh. That's two far bonus fourth level. Alright, now we'll do the hard save because I just got levels. A great pit lies in the shadow of the statue of Wodica. No light from the surface reaches the bottom, but even so, you catch flickers of a ghostly glow in the depths. A wind from the pit buffets you. It isn't cold, but it raises goose flesh along your arms. The wind carries a whisper, low and sibilant. As you look into the pit, souls gather around you. They encase you in a cloud of essence that swirls around your body while you consider your next move, which is going to be to jump into the pit! You jump, trusting in the promises of the gods and the power of the souls to bear you safely down. The sudden drop takes your breath away, but the souls catch you, encasing you in a shining, thrumming aura. But while they slow your descent, you can still feel that you are falling faster than you should. The essence flowing around you is strong, but chaotic. You find yourself drifting towards the wall. A Legina falls with you for a moment, but seems oddly buoyant during her slow descent, feathers fluttering silently along her arms and the sides of her face. Suddenly, her golden eyes grow wide, and she shouts, Look out, Brentfail, the wall! Um, I'm not going to make either one of those saving throws, apparently, so I'm going to reach for a companion. You reach out and feel a hand, strong and sure, wrap around your forearm. It tugs you away from the wall, just as you feel your toe grazing. Cha-ching! You manage to spread your arms and legs of the X, steadying your position and the rate of your descent. You reach the court of the penitents, millennia old stones, safely under your feet. After what seems like an eternity, your rapid descent comes to an abrupt end. You remain still for a moment while your heart settles and your eyes adjust, breathing in stale, forgotten air. Before you, a narrow and eroded walkway becomes faintly visible in the dim light, cutting a winding path through a cavern so expansive it seems a world unto itself. In the distance, you can make out the cold gleam of living Audra veins that spike and fork in and out of view from the murky depths beneath, their glow a faint and fleeting guide along the ancient trail. You look above at the opening you jump through, now barely a speck of light like some distant star alone in the cosmos, and forever out of reach. Your only way lies ahead. All right, I'm double checking something real quick because I want to see how much, I know this is the final stage of the game and I don't remember how it is, how long it is. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap up here because I think we've got a little bit more to go. Um, probably another couple hours, which I don't have today. Better than I expected. I'm trying to find out how much... I think how, that statue how... of Whitaker was watching us soil ourselves on the way down. <laughs> Everyone all right? No shattered knees? Good. Just me, then. If it's only like 30 minutes, we could wrap it up here. I'm trying to figure out how much, how long, how long is the last part of this game. This might actually not be as long as I think it is, because I'm I'm seeing a YouTube video that just popped up that's like 15 minutes long.
Yeah, their video is not complete. Yeah, we're going to save the rest for next time, everybody. Because um, I don't know exactly how much time I have left to complete the game. And I don't want to try to rush because it's 4 o'clock and i got to go help with chores and stuff since Chris had her tooth extraction. So, um, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. I will be live streaming this again sometime in the week. I don't know exactly my schedule yet. Um, it'll probably be later in the week because tomorrow we have to go to the hardware store and get supplies for plumbing stuff because we got to fix some plumbing around the house. And I don't know when we're doing that. I know we're going to the store on Monday morning, but I don't think we have time to also do the plumbing that day because we also have to go do some other stuff in town. So tomorrow's an errands day. I've already got videos pre-recorded for tomorrow. I've got some stuff pre-recorded for Tuesday. So when I get home tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to record stuff for Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. Tuesday, I'll probably be doing plumbing and everything else. Wednesday, I could theoretically stream on Wednesday, maybe. But it will be Wednesday or after before I'm streaming again, more than likely. But otherwise, I will be getting videos out every day like normal. I'm already, I think I have my afternoon videos at 5 p.m. scheduled out all the way to next Friday already. Um, and I've got most of my videos for Monday and Tuesday already done. I just got to do one more for 6 a.m. on Tuesday. And then I've got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to prep. But I'll be doing those over the next few days. So as I have time, you'll hear more from me. In the meantime, thanks to those of you who hung out today for uh, chatting, all the good stuff. Support if you can with memberships, super chat, super stickers. Thanks to Drugo Drogos. He was here uh, earlier on, a Romanian friend. He just uh, re-upped his membership for the sixth month. So thank you so much for that, Drogo. Um, Thanks, everybody else. I'm going to be heading out, get some chores done. I'll see you next time. There will be a video at 5 p.m. coming in about an hour. I don't know what it is. It's either going to be Star Wars, Red Dead Redemption 2, or Last of Us.